Hey folks, welcome to another Passion for Sound audio review. And today we're finally taking a look at the ZMF Verite Open and Verite Closed. I've been really excited to bring this one to you. The Verite Opens I bought secondhand a while ago, and now I've got myself a pair of Verite Closed on loan thanks to Zach and Bevan from ZMF. So thank you Zach and Bevan for sending it through. I'm really excited to share this with all of you viewers. Because I've got a fair bit of ground to cover, obviously comparing the Verite Open and the Verite Closed, and then also how they compare to the newer Atrium, I'm not going to spend too much time on things like accessories and design and stuff like that. I will touch on it, but not spend too long. And with that in mind, I'm going to start off by saying that this is the Pelican case that you get most ZMF headphones in. For a while, they were sending them out in wooden cases, but I believe there's been some supply issues. So you might get a beautiful wooden box, but at worst case, you get this lovely Pelican case, which is sturdy, solid, and keeps your headphones well protected. Beyond the Pelican case, you also get a nice quality cable. It's nothing special, but it feels good and solid to use. There are also upgrade cable options available, and whilst I don't like the basic upgrade cable as much as the stock cable, there are then higher level cable choices too. I haven't played with those, so I'm not going to try and cover them off here because I want to spend the maximum amount of time I can talking about the headphones themselves. And so the final point I'm going to make about cables is that all of the ZMF range use mini XLR connectors on the bottom, and that makes it very easy to buy aftermarket cables. And so with the basics of accessories and the like out of the way, let's start talking about the Verite open and the Verite closed. <laughs> And one other thing I want to make clear is that all of my testing for this review, I've done using the stock pads. And that means it's the Universe perforated pads for the Verite Open and the Atrium when I get to them. And it's the Universe solid pads when I'm talking about the Verite Closed. I'm hoping to do a full pad rolling review in the future with measurements of the different options, discussions of which ones work well for different sorts of genres and music, all of that. But do let me know in the comments, is that something you're interested in? Or is it one of those things where you'd rather buy the pads and go on the journey yourself? I'd be keen to hear what you have to say down in the comments below. For now though, let's start talking about the design and comfort of the ZMF headphones. And the good news is I can say this once because it's the same for all of them. Whether it's the three models here or some of the lower end models like the Auteur, the Atticus, the Icon, any of those, they all have the same level of build and fit and comfort. And that is to say, they're all excellent. So all ZMF headphones have this same approach with the headband across the top. We've then got it connecting to this spline here, which has got some little grooves in it that allow you to notch up or down the distance that the cup sits from the top of the head. In other words, to change the size of your head size. You've then got rotation in the cups and also some bend in the actual band. And all of this results in a wonderfully comfortable fit. They're not the lightest headphones around, but they're not overly heavy. They're not like the early orders, the LCD models, where they did get quite heavy on the head after a while. But they're also not necessarily a headphone that's going to completely disappear on the head either. That said, I've worn these for literally hours straight and had no discomfort at all. Part of the reason for that as we look at the headband is that in addition to a little bit of padding in the headband, we've then also got this leather strap and that helps to even out the pressure across the whole head. And on newer models, more recent models that you buy, and that's regardless of whether you're talking a Verite, an Atrium, etc., they've also built in these little lumps of extra padding into the headbands and I believe that further improves the comfort. I know for me, when I had my original Verite Opens, so when I say original, I bought these secondhand, as I mentioned before. They had some problems, just some wear and tear because they were a very early model. And that original version had just a smooth headband on top. So it had padding, but not the little lumps of padding. After I sent it into ZMF for some refurbishment, it came back with the new style headband. And I haven't specifically noticed it being largely more comfortable, but it's certainly no less comfortable. And in both cases, they were completely comfortable. I think that's about as many times as I can say comfortable in a sentence, so you probably get the idea. 
Moving on, when we start looking at the cups themselves, they're a good generous sized cup, depending on the pad that you buy, and as I mentioned before, these are the universe pads. But some of the other pads give you a bit less depth in the pads, some of them will change the size and dimensions of the opening slightly, but I don't see any of them causing any problems, even for those with larger ears. And so that makes the ZMF range, in general, a very, very comfortable headphone. Now the final and very obvious thing I should mention is that all ZMF headphones are made out of real timber. And so one of the beautiful things about that is that each of them is going to be a little bit unique. Now as I'm recording this, I actually can't remember what each of the timbers is, but I'll put a note on screen to say what this Verite Closed is, what the Verite Open is, and then also the Atrium when we get to it. The very final thing that I'm going to re-mention, and I know I've already touched on it, is that on the bottom of each cup, you've got these mini XLR connectors. And that makes for a really secure fit, a very easy connection and disconnection, and as I said before, it's very easy to buy aftermarket cables for them if you want to. And so comfort, design, general aesthetics, everything about that from ZMF headphones are absolutely top notch. They don't quite reach the heights of comfort and disappearing on the head like say a Meza Elite, but they're right there as like a 1B tier of comfort, there's just a few headphones that are even better still. I'm sure though that what you're really here for is to find out how each of them sound and how they compare. So let's get into the sound quality, and I'm going to start with the Verite Open. Listening to the Verite Open here, and again this is with the stock Universe pads, that's the perforated Universe pads. Listening to these, and I started all of my testing with the Cord Hugo TT2 as a very neutral, solid state source. Listening to these from that, the Verite Open is undeniably crisp and fast and fairly neutral. The bass is snappy and tight. And if anything, it might be just a little bit shy of neutral when compared to the treble levels. It definitely has enough bass, but it's not a bassy headphone by any stretch. The predominant tonality and feel of the Verite Opens to me is one of neutrality, speed, and clarity. It's not unlike the recently reviewed Abyss Diana TC, but I actually prefer listening to the Verite Opens. In order to get that sense of clarity and definition, the Verite Opens have a little bit of extra treble energy. And for me, I do occasionally find them from something like the TT2, which is very neutral, I do find them getting just a little bit fatiguing sometimes at higher volume levels. For lower level listening, there's no problems at all, they're not specifically a harsh or aggressive sounding headphone, but they can push just a little bit too far for me when I want to crank the volume a little bit. The positive trade-off for that though, is that you're getting an absolutely wonderful sense of mid-range, vocal, instrumental clarity when you're listening to the Verites. They're very much a headphone that I think is great if you're a lover of vocals and instrumentals and you really want that beautiful clarity through the mid-range. Surprisingly, one area that I do find the Verites fall back a little bit, and I mean the Verite Opens of course, is in the soundstage depth. They actually produce quite a flat soundstage and that surprises me for a headphone at this level, but it doesn't make them a bad headphone by any stretch. Again, much like I said in my review of the Diana TC, they separate the sounds really well. There's a good sense of width in the soundstage, and so they don't feel congested or closed in, they just don't produce a great amount of space between the listener and whatever's happening at the back of the soundstage. Admittedly, I would have preferred a bit more depth out of them if it was possible, and we'll talk about that more with the atriums in a moment, but everything that the Verite Opens do, they do wonderfully, wonderfully well. And for me, they're a fantastic headphone for orchestral music and areas where you want that level of detail and texture and clarity without sacrificing depth and extension in the bass. And indeed, really the only thing that holds them back for me is a little bit of lack in soundstage depth. Other than that, they're a wonderful headphone for those looking for a balanced tonality that's fast, dynamic, and crisp and clean. But I know that some of you might be sitting there saying, yes, but they're so much better on tubes, why are you testing them on solid state? And so what I've done for each of the headphones in this review is I've also put them on tubes, and I'm going to share that with you now. So for this comparison, I was going between the Cord Hugo TT2 and the Bottlehead Mainline. In both cases, the TT2 was the DAC, and so I was either using the internal amplification stage from the TT2 for solid state, or I was using the Bottlehead Mainline for tubes. If you're not familiar with the Bottlehead Mainline, it's a wonderful tube amp, it's a DIY kit, so you build it yourself, and once built, it has performance that's easily on par with multi-thousand dollar headphone amps. One of the things I particularly like about the Mainline is it's a fairly neutral sounding tube amp. It's still a tube amp, so it's got that little bit of character through the mid-range, but it's not thick or warm or lush or anything like that, it actually sounds quite solid state, but with all the benefits of tubes just dashed into the mix. Something else that I really like about the main line, and you can check out my separate review if you want to know even more detail, but one of the other things I really like about it is it's got a switch for output impedance. 
So you can run it in low output impedance mode, so it's going to perform closer to solid state, or you can run it in a high output impedance mode, which is going to be a little bit more like an OTL amp. It does still have a transformer between the tubes and the headphones, but the high output impedance does tend to help to thicken up the sound of the headphones just a little bit. And so as I've bounced between the two, going from the TT2 that is, to the main line with the Verite Opens, what I heard was that the main line in the low output impedance mode brought just the tiniest little touch of that little bit of extra warmth, or maybe even slowness is a better term, to the Verite Open. It didn't become overly slow, but it just took the very, very last little bit of edge and attack and speed out of the Verite Opens. And for me, that is preferable. These are such a fast, snappy driver that I do sometimes find them a little bit over-energetic. Not that it becomes fatiguing, but I just want a little bit more presence in the notes and a slightly slower decay. I don't want things to kind of snap and disappear quite as fast as they do. The track I was listening to as I was doing some of this testing was Fireflies by Rag and Bone Man, and I felt like in a gentle ballad like that from a fast snappy headphone like the Opens, what I was finding was the TT2 had just a bit too much snap and attack in things like the snares and the cymbals, and it was almost overdoing them in the mix. Moving to the main line in low output impedance mode did fix that a little bit, but I have to say going to high output impedance mode, which works beautifully with a 300 ohm headphone like these, that was really the perfect balance. Now I was still able to enjoy all of the speed and detail from the opens, but with just a touch of extra added smoothness and richness into the mix. Ultimately, it just made everything sound more natural, more tonally accurate, because it balanced out the attack on the snares and cymbals with the richness of the vocals, the bass, and all the other instruments. And so whilst the changes aren't dramatic, we're talking maybe a 5% shift overall, but that 5% is just right for me to make the Verite Opens a more enjoyable headphone. And don't get me wrong, they start off a wonderfully enjoyable headphone, but for me they're a can that I would absolutely recommend to be used with tube amps or a smoother sounding solid state amp, like say a Singer SA-1, a shit Jotunheim 2, anything that's got a bit of body and richness to the sound. The Denifrips Artemis is another one that would be a magical pair with the Verite Opens. And so let's park the Verite Opens now and move over to their brother or sister in the Verite Closed. The Verite Closed or VCs use the same exact driver as I understand it compared to the Verite Opens, but of course they're now in this closed housing. The moment you take a driver out of an open housing and put it in a closed housing, you're going to get a completely different frequency response because of the internal resonances of the housing. And then of course Zach from ZMF has put a lot of time and effort into tuning the driver within the housing. So you shouldn't expect these headphones to sound identical, and they definitely don't. In fact, moving from the Verite open to the Verite closed, the first thing I noticed was it makes the Verite closed sound quite forward in the mid-range. It sounds like it's got a little bit too much detail and emphasis in the upper mids, but it's one of those contrast things, and I've spoken about that in a couple of recent videos, so I won't carry on about it. But the point is, neither one is right or wrong, neither one is good or bad, they're different, and if you jump from one to the other, it will make one sound wrong and the other one sound right until your ears adjust. What you start to hear though, as your ears do adjust to the Verite Closed, is a sound that's a bit more dynamic and a bit more fun than the Verite Open. It's got a bit more presence down low, but it's still got a wonderful sense of speed and dynamics and attack just with that dose of fun added from a bit of extra mid-range and a bit of extra bass energy. You can also clearly hear that the Verite Closed isn't as smooth and linear a frequency response as the Verite Open. There's some definite lumps and bumps in the frequency response as you listen to it, but they're not bad. There's no drastic holes or gaps in the frequency response, but as you listen to it, you can hear there's points of emphasis, and I like it. It brings a nice, playful, and fun coloring to the sound without ever going too far. They're not an unnatural headphone. They're maybe not a headphone I would choose to mix or master with, but they're absolutely neutral enough to never be distracting or sound off as you listen to music. In fact, quite the opposite. It's like they take all of your music and just give it a slight dash of fun and a slight dash of enjoyment and make it all wonderful. Much like the VOs, that's the Verite Opens, the VCs do still definitely place an emphasis on mid-range and clarity and speed, but as I've already said, they do it with a bit more bassfulness as well. Even though they've got that extra bass, things never get overly warm or muddy or boomy, because there's still plenty of energy from the Verite Closed to keep things balanced. And that's really the key in their tuning, is there's excellent balance between each of the points of emphasis across the frequency range. Something else that I really enjoy about the VCs in comparison to the VOs is that they actually produce a bit more sense of depth than the VOs do. So from the VCs, you're going to get a little bit more soundstage depth and therefore layering. It might have a slightly less wide soundstage, but it's only by a small amount. 
and the imaging qualities, that is the ability to focus the individual sounds, are equivalent from both. And that is to say, because I don't think I mentioned it for the opens, that is to say, the imaging qualities are excellent. They're not quite the very best I've heard out of headphones, given that there's things like the Susvara in the world, but they're very, very good. And having just mentioned the $6,000 Susvara, I realized I haven't mentioned the price of the Verites. I was so eager to get to the sound quality that I skated straight past the fact that these headphones retail for two and a half thousand US dollars. Unless there's a limited edition or a special version, that might be different, but generally speaking, we're talking a two and a half thousand dollar headphone. And for a flagship headphone with flagship performance, that's actually pretty good. Now, if you're still picking your jaw up off the floor for me saying that two and a half thousand dollars is a good price for a headphone, my point is that in a world where we've got $4,000, $4,500 and $6,000 headphones, and that's not to mention the even more expensive headphones like say a pair of Abyss 1266s, in a world where we've got headphones commanding $4,000 plus, $2,500 for flagship level performance is fantastic. And I do think that the Verites perform according to that price. They're not quite as good as something like a Meza Elite or a Susvara at nearly double the price, or even more than double the price for the Susvara, but they're absolutely performing at the level I expect for a $2,500 headphone or even a little bit more. But before we get too caught up in pricing, let me talk about the Verite Closed and how it performs on tubes. Generally speaking, what I find is that I like the VC more across all different amps. And my point with that is that I find the VC's tuning suits solid state as much as it suits tubes, whereas I think the Verite Open much more suits tubes. And that's not at all a knock on the Verite Open, it's not to say the Verite Closed is instantly the better headphone, but I do find it more versatile across multiple sources, and that can be a benefit for some people. Moving over to the Bottlehead mainline and comparing it with the TT2 using the Verite Closed, I do still find myself ever so slightly preferring tubes with the Verite Closed. I think both of these headphones, because of their amazing speed of that driver, I think both of them do benefit from just being slowed down by just a couple of percent. But with the Verite Closed, it's not as much of a shift because they've already got that bit of extra bass, that little bit of extra richness down low, which helps them sound not quite as snappy and energetic and fast on different sorts of devices. To be clear, there is no shortage of speed from the VCs, they're still a very dynamic and clean and fast headphone, but they've just got a bit more presence behind them that helps to offset that very fast decay. Now, if you're not familiar with the term decay, what I'm referring to there is the speed at which the note disappears after it's been hit. So a headphone with very fast decay is going to hit the notes hard and then disappear quickly. Whereas something with a slightly longer decay is going to linger a little bit and it's going to give the note or the sound a greater sense of presence and body. There's a balance point where too slow of a decay is going to become thick and muddy and hard to listen to, as well as when there's too fast decay, sounding a bit lifeless and lacking in weight. To me, the Verite Opens are right on the edge of going towards too fast. They're not actually over the edge, but they're towards the end of it. Whereas the Verite Closed come back just a step. And when paired with tube amps, they're both excellent as good examples of really fast decay that doesn't go too far and become too weightless. And so to wrap up my thoughts on the Verite Open and Closed before we talk about the Atrium, I find myself preferring ever so slightly the Verite Closed, but you probably already worked that out. There's no doubt to me that some people are going to prefer the Verite Open because it is a more neutral, slightly leaner sound, and it does tend to bring forward clarity and detail better across the whole frequency range. And particularly if you're pairing it up with a slightly warmer amp, be it tubes or a warm solid state, I can absolutely see people loving the Verite Open over the Verite Closed. And it's not like I don't like the Verite Opens, I just happen to love the Verite Closed a little bit more than I love the Verite Opens. They're both wonderful headphones. Whilst I think both are good for all sorts of genres, if you are a classical music listener and you can do an open headphone, I personally think the Verite Open is just a little bit stronger in that space. The Verite Closed is by no means bad in classical music, but the Verite Open has just that beautiful balance of tonality across the board, which suits the full range frequency response of a full orchestra. And so ultimately, as you probably gathered, I think both are absolutely fantastic. I tossed and turned about whether I was going to keep the Verite Opens, given that I've got the Atriums coming from Zach, I've still got the demo pair here for now, but the reality is I can't bring myself to part with them, not at this stage anyway. A, I enjoy their sound, and B, I just think they're one of the most beautiful headphones on the planet. And so I'm going to highly recommend both the Verite Open and the Verite Closed, and now I want to move on to talking about how both of them compare to the newer ZMF Atrium. 
This is the Atrium here, and if you're not already familiar with it in detail, I'll let you go and have a look at the full review of the Atrium to learn more about the design behind it, why it exists, and why Zach has brought the Atrium out to sit alongside the Verite rather than replacing it. So this is an identically priced headphone with a different driver and a different internal damping design. So jump over and check out my review of the Atrium if you want the technical details. But for now, let's jump into talking about which one of these three headphones is going to be best for you, and I'll share with you which one I think I enjoy the most too. All my testing for this one was using the Bottlehead Mainline, because I felt like that was the best sound for both the Verite open and closed, and the Atrium sounds great on it too. For this test, I was using the track Reckless Hearts and Restless Hands by the Pierce Brothers. They're a great Aussie band, check them out if you haven't heard of them. And I started off with the Verite Opens, again from the Mainline, as I mentioned before, using the TT2 as the DAC. And the Verite Open sounded wonderfully crisp and clean and snappy, as you'd expect. One of the great things about the VOs that I've already mentioned is they really bring vocals and the detail of vocals right to the front and centre, and it's really enjoyable on a great male vocal like this. Moving over to the Verite Closed, and I really enjoyed the bit of extra richness and presence they brought to this track. The extra bit of bass gives the track a bit more rhythm and drive, which suits this track really well, but there's still no shortage of speed and energy and clarity from the Verite Closed. So, so far on this track, and indeed most tracks, I do slightly prefer the Verite Closed. It's not as neutral, it's a little bit less detail-oriented in some ways, but for me it's the more fun and engaging listen. Moving then to the Atrium though, and you get a completely different sound. So if the Verite Open and Close are only a couple of percent different, which they are, then moving to something like the Atrium is a fairly significant shift. To use some arbitrary numbers, we're talking probably a 5-10% to 10 shift in going to the Atrium. It's still clearly a ZMF house sound, but it's got a completely different character to it. The most obvious thing I noticed when I went to the Atriums was this significant loss of speed. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but if you remember that continuum I spoke about before, where you've got the Verites up at the very edge of very fast decay, as in what's still good fast decay, then I'd say the atriums are starting down towards the bottom end of slow decay. They're not too slow, but they're definitely a much slower headphone than the Verites. And that's both what makes me love the atriums, but also know that they're not going to be the right headphone for everybody. What you get as a trade-off for that slower sound, though, is a huge sense of space from the atriums. I love the way these produce a soundstage, and they're miles ahead of the Verite open and closed in the soundstage game. And in some ways that's great, it makes them very complimentary headphones if you wanted one of the Verites and one of the Atriums. And it also means you can choose the headphone with the priorities that suit you. If you want speed and detail, you've got the Open. If you want speed and detail but with a dash of fun, then you've got the Closed. If you want more soundstage space and a lusher, richer performance, then you've got the Atriums. So there's really a flavour to suit everybody, and I think that's cool. As I've played around with all three of these across multiple different devices, I definitely think the Atrium doesn't need a high output impedance. It slows it down just a bit more than I think it needs, at least with the stock pads on it. And so this is a headphone that I would recommend for low output impedance amps, and generally more neutral amps. So something like the Mainline, or like a clean solid state, say the TT2, or the Burston Soloist GT, or the Burston Soloist 3XP, any of those that are pretty clean and pretty neutral are going to suit the Atrium better. When paired with a nice neutral amp, I do personally think the Atrium is the most natural sounding of the three, and indeed it's probably one that I love the most and reach for the most out of all three, but a lot of that does depend on the pairings. Putting the Verites with the mainline in high output impedance mode, and it's a much closer question. So really some of this comes down to your preferences, some of it comes down to your source chain, and what you're going to be pairing it up with. Ultimately, I can't stress enough that out of all three of these, there's not one that is clearly the best or the worst, they're all really good in their own areas. And I'm not just saying that because I like Zach and Bevan, which I do, I think they're great people with a great company, the reality is they've made three fantastic headphones. They're not headphones that are going to suit every single person, but between the three, there is a headphone that will suit every single person, I think. And so to bring all this to a close and sum it all up, I definitely think that all three of these deserve their flagship status with ZMF, and I can't wait to see what Zach and Bevan cook up for the closed atrium. But until that time, if I had to rank the three of these, and remembering that it's how much I love them, not which one is good and which one is bad, but I definitely love the atrium most, and then I think the VC, and then the VO, but all of them are great. If you're looking for one of these headphones, the way I'd split them, and I've already said this, but I'm just going to recap it for those that have got too much going on in their head from so much we've covered today. If you're looking to choose one of them, 
then speed and clarity and neutrality go for the Verite Open, speed and clarity and dynamics with a touch of richness and punch go for the Verite Closed, and if you're looking for a natural live sound that's a little bit slower, a little bit richer and warmer, then it's the ZMF Atrium. And of course, if you're looking for a combination, you can mix and match to your heart's content. Don't forget, you can then do pad rolling and further tweak the sound. I did discuss pad rolling of the Atrium in my Atrium review, so check that out if you're interested. And don't forget to let me know in the comments if you want me to do a full pad rolling video, which will focus on the Verite Open and the Verite Closed. Let me know down in the comments below if you're interested in that. For now though, as always, I hope you found this review useful and entertaining. If you have, I'd love it if you hit subscribe, ring the notification bell, and definitely please hit the like button. It helps me to know what videos you want to see, and YouTube as well. In the meantime though, let me leave you to the music, so happy listening, and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound.